Vic is on her own, and the showdown finally happened. We're halfway through Nosferatu for the season. Let's jump right in, man. Music! Okay, so a couple of key things here. Vic is now on her own. This was actually kind of heartbreaking in a couple of spots. Um, the first thing that you see at the beginning of the episode is Vic uh, almost going crazy. Um, just painting and creating and she ends up coming up with the likeness of Charlie Manx. And in a very similar style to, you know, the comic book that we have here, The Wraith. Um, very similar to some of the art that's actually used for Charlie Minx in in this graphic novel and That was a beautiful little nod to the pop culture that we already have uh, In the real world about this The interesting part is how her kind of going into a fugue state in doing all of that and creating all these paintings It terrified her dad and then later on in the episode she ends up getting into a small little spat with her dad's new girlfriend and her dad makes probably the biggest mistake that he's made in this show so far and that includes putting hands on her mother he whether he meant to or not chose his girlfriend over his kid and that is something that i can tell you as a father you don't do you you just flat out do don't do that especially at the age that vic is at where she she doesn't have to come home. She doesn't have to ever see you again. I mean, she's 18. She's basically emancipated. Or if not 18. No, she is 18 in the show. Yeah, she is. Um, it was very emotional to me. Because you've already seen in these five episodes, you've already seen the creation of a broken home for Vic. From a very tumultuous, very turmoil-filled relationship to essentially the disillusion of a marriage. And then... From that, you also see her father basically choosing his girlfriend over Vic. Even when the kid's in the wrong, man, parenting comes first. It, it just does. And for the record, I think that their relationship, even from the first five minutes of seeing it on on the show, was toxic. It should have ended. It needed to end. Uh, they were they were just feeding into the worst possible aspects of themselves. I'm talking about the parents. And Vic played that. She definitely did. She's a teenager. What else are you going to do? But that was a very emotional scene. Now, the reason that I highlight that one is even just looking at the novel, from the um, upheaval of her home life, you see, you got to see what happened to Vic when she started to chase down Charlie Manx. How she ended up in, I want to say, Colorado, but don't quote me. Uh, regardless, she ended up in uh, what I believe was the House of Sleep at that point. And uh, ends up meeting Luke Carmody who, by the way, is credited with only one episode, but has been cast and will be in this season. We're getting Luke Carmody. So her being on her own and being with Maggie Lee right now kind of, kind of sets me up for uh, what we're going to see happen to Vic later on. Probably not this season, although the bats are in the the bats are in the tunnel right now. So I think that we're going to see some happen this season but essentially we're gonna see her start to go crazy we're gonna see her her ability take its toll and the trauma of manx and bing take its toll on her and it's going to be very intriguing and very thrilling to see this descent into madness for vic mcqueen but now let's also talk about what i just said there the bats in the tunnel the altercation finally, the confrontation rather, finally happened between Vic and Charlie. They got to meet up, and we learned even more about the Inscapes. We learned that Charlie's goal is to live forever, and he has more knowledge than he lets on about even Vic's own Inscape, the bats specifically, inside her tunnel. And apparently, if the bats all fly out of there, the bats all fly out of there. Uh, alluding to the fact that when you use your knife to cut through into your inscape, there is a physical toll and there is a mental toll. There is a price to be paid. With Maggie Lee in the novels, it was her stutter. With Charlie, it's his aging and his dem his demonic lust for youthfulness and life and souls. Apparently, it's his e excuse me his evil. For Vic, it's her sanity. 
and that was one of the most heartbreaking and captivating things of the novel itself. So we're starting to see the dominoes start to line up, and I want to see how AMC chooses to knock them down. And the final scene in this episode really kind of drove that home. After the Wraith, being manned by no one, we got total Christine action here, runs her down, and she's in the hospital in a coma. She tells Agent Tabitha everything, and is then forced by her dad to commit herself for observation into a psych ward. Vic is not crazy, not yet, but we're already seeing, as I said, the dominoes starting to stack up. This was not the best episode that this season has had so far. It was definitely not the scariest. Very few actual scares in this episode. However, it was one of those important episodes. This is the episode where things start to fall down from here. And I can see this being a thrill ride from this point on. You know, we might have one more episode like this because I think there's 10. So I, there could be one more episode like this, but I hope that from the, at the, from this point on, the exposition that we got here is what's used for the rest of this season and into next, because there was a lot to take in. Scary? No. Thrilling? Sure. Best of the season? Nah. But important. So what did you guys think? What did you think of this episode? Did you like it as much as me? Did you like it better? Less? I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below. Do not forget to hit that like button. Do not forget to that subscribe button down there if you haven't already. And if you haven't already, I really don't know why. I'll wait for you. Oh shit, if I wait, the music is just gonna start.